Hey kids, Mr. B here. We're going to do a quick social studies lesson and um, just to kind of let you understand what's going on here. When we had talked about um, the Vikings and Columbus and other uh, people that had started to come out toward this way into the uh, like the Americas, when I mean America, I'm talking about North America and South America and, and areas of, of that nature, um, we're kind of skipping over some of the history of what happened when um, Europe and other places realized that the United States was where it was. And it wasn't called the United States then, it was just America. Um, but they, they realized that the land was there. Uh, and we're kind of skipping over a lot of things, and we're getting to the point where um, England has decided to colonize or live in and set up um, you know, places for people to live and work. Um, in America. And we're going to talk about that. And at the end of all this, you're going to be able to take a, a pretty quick and easy quiz. And if you follow along with this, and if you use the Nearpod, I can't imagine how in the world you could possibly fail this. Um, it's probably one of the easiest quizzes I've given. Um, but I want to do that because some people need to, they need to pull their social studies grade up. And I'm trying to help you. Like I said in the uh, instructions, help me help you pull your grade up by doing well on this today. So let's kind of go through this really quickly. I would watch this video if I were you. Now, first and foremost, let's let's define. We can't talk about the colonist in a colony without me giving you the definition of a colony. A colony is a territory that is governed by another country. So when we look at the 13 colonies, the 13 English colonies, we need to understand that they were governed by England. It's even though we're looking at this and, and this to you looks very familiar and you're thinking, oh, this is the United States. No, not yet. This is the 13 colonies. OK, and it was divided into three sections, the New England colonies, which were up north, the middle colonies, which shocking were in the middle of all the 13 colonies. And then the southern colonies are the colonies down south, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, and a few others in there as well. So a colony is a territory that is governed by another country. So we all know that um, at this time, the 13 colonies were governed by England. In the colonies, you might hear in the uh, video, or you might hear me mention a place called a meeting house. Um, now, a meeting house um, was a place that was used for public assemblies, where they had like their town meetings. Um, Many times it was also the church. Many times it was also the church um, where they held their religious services. But they had this center place in the middle of town uh, that they knew that they could go and have government meetings and that they could have their religious meetings. But a meeting house is just a building used for public assembly where they gathered to talk about things that were going on in the colony. Um, and um, other things of that nature. So that's very, very important to understand. And I think you'll probably see something about that soon. The New England colonies. The New England colonies. Remember back here, we talked about three. They're all the same as they're the 13 colonies, but they divided them into three different sections. The New England colonies are up here. Okay, The New England colonies were a part of the original 13 colonies, and it was Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. Um, and at that time, Maine wasn't there. Um, it, was, it was also a part of Massachusetts. It divided off and became Maine later on, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it's important uh, to note the different states that are in the different colonies. And that's going to become more and more important as we go through because we're going to realize why they had different ways of life in the different colonies. And in the New England colonies, which we will talk about pretty soon, probably next week we'll get into that, you had Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. And again, Maine was a part of Massachusetts at that time. The Puritans. The Puritans, you're going to hear a lot about the Puritans. The Puritans were the first colonists to come to New England. They were the first colonists to come to New England. Now, at this time over in England, 
um, the king pretty much told everybody what to do in almost every part of their life, including the way that they worshipped in church. The Puritans weren't big fans of being told how to do the things that they were doing in church. They had their own beliefs, and they wanted to practice their religion differently. But again, the king was in charge of not only the government, but the church. If the Puritans didn't listen to the king, they would have gotten into big, big trouble, possibly jailed, maybe even killed if they weren't listening. So in about 1630, a thousand Puritans set sail for America. And one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest reasons they came here was for something we're going to talk about here in a few moments called religious freedom, religious freedom. And that's extremely important to understand. The Puritans came here in about 1630, and they were looking for religious freedom. When they got here, they set up something called the Massachusetts Bay Colony, which again included parts of Maine and obviously parts of Massachusetts as well. But they went through and they set up the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And one of the biggest reasons that they came here, they weren't searching for gold. It wasn't about work or land or, or serving their country or anything else. One of their biggest reasons was because they wanted religious freedom. And there were some other reasons, and we'll get into that later, but their big thing was, hey, if we come over here, we won't have this king hanging over our head all the time trying to tell us how to worship, when to worship, and things of that nature. Here's that word religious freedom. Um, what does that mean? What does it mean to have religious freedom? Well, religious freedom is the ability to practice your religion the way you want to without being scared of any kind of punishment. It's, you, can, you can practice the religion the way you want to and you're not worried about the king putting you in jail. You're not worried about someone killing you because of that. Religious freedom is the way that you can practice your religion the way you want to without the fear of punishment. And it's, it's good to note that we still have that religious freedom in America now. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that we need to think back on as we go through that. I'm going to stop here. I think we have gone through enough for today, especially since we're going to do double duty and do some science and social studies in one day. So we'll just stop it there. Um, and if you take notes on these um, slides that I've given you and you've listened to this video, I can't imagine how in the world you can't get um, a perfect score on that uh, quiz that I added for you today as well. All right, kiddos, uh, take it easy. And uh, I think the next time that I see a whole lot of you, it will actually be second quarter, if you can believe that. And we will be starting um, some new things in science and continuing our teachings in social studies. Take it, kids. Take it easy, kids. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe.